Okay, so um, oftentimes people want to render map multiple objects within the same scene. And basically this is to create a more efficient rendering pipeline. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do to optimize the actual way you render map multiple objects. Uh, one of the tricks is to render map into a single texture map. So all the objects basically will get their render mapping cooked into one single map. And that basically reduces the overall number of textures in the scene, obviously. And as a consequence, you have lower memory requirements and the scene renders more efficiently. So to show you how this can be done, um, we have this simple scene here with our three elephants. So what we're going to do is render map them into the same texture map. And basically, uh, how this is done is through the use of groups. A render map property is applied to a group. Um, and each object within that group has its own unique UV set, which doesn't overlap with the UVs of other objects within that group. Uh, and basically how that's done is by uh, offsetting the UV coordinates of each object uh, in, the, in the unique UV operator. Uh, so it's basically a fairly simple process, but we'll just walk through it so you have a, a good idea uh, of how this works. So we'll select all three objects and we're going to apply a unique UV operator to them. And we're going to use the individual poly packing option. So every polygon has its own UV uh, coordinate and they don't overlap. Uh, let's just specify here a decent sized uh, target resolution. Um, and the important thing here is I'm going to set the dimensions to uh, 0.5 height and width, effectively having the width and height uh, that the UV set will occupy. So this basically um, makes the UV set occupy only a quarter of the, the full uh, texture surface area. And what we're going to do is individually we're going to place the uh, UV lower left bounding corner um, offsetting it basically for each object so they don't overlap each other. So for this guy we'll leave it at 0, 0. So at the origin for this guy, let's offset it 0.5 in U, so effectively shifting it over. And this guy will set 0.5 in V, so shifting it upwards. So now we have three unique UV sets on each object, and they don't overlap um, in space. So the next thing we want to do is just apply the render map property. So we'll create a group, and let's just name that group. And on the group, we'll apply a render map property. And let's name this something uh, unique. And we'll get the resolution uh, to something uh, large enough. And remember, this resolution we're specifying is for all the objects uh, contained in the group. So if you have a large scene, of course, you need uh, one large texture map that can actually uh, uh, contain uh, and properly uh, hold all the resolution for all the objects uh, in the scene. And this is something to keep uh, be aware of because the image kind of takes a contiguous block of memory. Um, if you have a very, very large texture, say like, you know, 6K by 6K, you're going to need a huge block of contiguous memory. And sometimes that's just not possible. So there is obviously uh, a balancing point between uh, size of the of the actual texture map and number of objects you're going to use. So, you know, you should try and divide up the scene into different chunks and manage it that way. So, uh, let's make sure to set the UV uh, coordinates that we're using to the unique UVs we created. And everything else should be fine, so let's just regenerate that map. So now the actual render map process is a little more efficient too, because basically what it's doing uh, is it's taking all the three objects and sending that one job to mental ray. So all three gets rendered into the same texture map as one kind of mental ray uh, job. Whereas if we render mapped each object separately, um, we'd have to do three separate renders. And that's a little more time consuming in terms of efficiency. Okay, so now that's done. Let's just check out the actual image and uh, what we got out of that. So there's our elephant clip. So you can see here, uh, it's a little bit hard to tell, but uh, we have the first elephant that we left at zero, zero. Uh, so the UV set belongs in this quadrant here. 
uh, the next elephant in the adjacent one, and the third one above here. Uh, we obviously, we have this one quadrant that's blank since we def didn't define any UVs there. Uh, and obviously with textures, you want to maximize your, your coverage. So you want to make sure you're not wasting, you know, large spaces like that. So you'd put a fourth object in that area. And you're also free to divide up the quadrants or, you know, actually lay out the UVs manually yourself. Uh, by using the unique UV operator, I just, it's a quick way of setting it up. But of course, you know, uh, you want to lay that out as efficiently as possible. Uh, so you're not wasting uh, kind of expensive texture space. So once that's done, the last thing we have to do is just connect it up in the render tree. And to do that, we're going to apply material on the group and assign the texture through the group. So we want to make sure we use the proper UV set. Um, and of course, on this guy, we want to actually set the OGL resolution to the proper size. So if we actually go onto the image uh, under the texturing tab, you've got the OGL texture setting display. So we'll set that to the largest 2048. And there you go. You can see it pops in uh, in the proper resolution. So there we go. We've render mapped uh, all these three objects into a single texture map. And uh, that's the basic workflow.